What's the difference between the successful DFS Sharks and the average NFL DFS player? Two things. Implementing the right strategy when building your lineup and efficient access to the right data. We'll discuss both as we prepare the 2022 DraftKings Week 1 Main Slate lineup for GPP Play, and it's all coming up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Lee with the Fantasy Football Consultants. Today's show is all about how to build better NFL DFS lineups, and I am so excited to have Rob McLister, founder of DFS Hub, a site that helps DFS enthusiasts understand and efficiently exploit NFL data. Rob, welcome to the show. Great to be here. All right. We've got a ton of offers, Rob to be an affiliate or a partner of different organizations, almost all that we reject. We are so happy to be affiliate of DFS Hub, not only because we have tested and truly believe in your site, but just because we have a similar mission, both FFC and DFS Hub. Tell our audience a little bit more about DFS Hub. Yeah, you know, you you guys and us kind of do things for the same reason. We love NFL DFS. We, you know, it's it's not a, only a business, but it's a hobby, uh, and that's you know the passion is number one. And so, you know, we exist to level the playing field uh, between uh, casual users and the pros, and even between advanced users and the pros. And we do that by putting all the news and data you could possibly need on one in one place. Uh, and trying to make it easy for people to to find you know those four x players, so those those players that hit four times value because that's what you need uh, to cash consistently. Yeah, well, I definitely appreciate your site because it lets you build better lineups and do it efficiently because time is money. But rather than talk about your site, let's actually show them as we build a week one 2022 DraftKings GPP lineup on the main slate. All right, we're on the DFS Hub site. Rob, your site has so many different tools, but the tool that I like the most is the NFL Lineup Builder tool that we're looking at here. You wanna take us through some of the major components that are on this builder? Yeah, so this is like the world of uh, news and data uh, for players all in one place. So, you know, on the bottom here, you got the player list, and this is where you do your analysis. So, you know, you add columns, whatever columns you want. We got, you know, a few hundred columns of data, uh, all kinds of different stats and 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 whatnot. Um, you know, you can move uh, things around. You can customize it. It saves it when you log back in. Uh, you can uh, then do your research, you know, click on a player. Uh, you can see their recent uh, performance over here, their teammates. You got the news down here in the bottom right. And so that's, we got like over 4,500 news sources. I think pretty much the most news of uh, any lineup builder tool that I, I'm aware of anyway. We got uh, breaking tweets from, you know, your uh, DFS pros out there uh, and, and journalists. Uh, we got uh, news wires uh, from Rotowire and Rotoballer, all in one place. So uh, all of this is customizable. You do your research, you know, you lock in a player that you like, you build your lineup up top, and away you go. All right. Well, let's let's build our uh, our GBP lineup for 2022 Week One on DraftKings. So this is DraftKings, our Fanduel. You can use your site for right. And That's at the right. top left, we're on DraftKings. So we're going to see all the salary information for DraftKings. So we're going to focus our attention in the in the player list area, if you want to scroll down a little bit. Uh, and uh, I'm going to start with quarterbacks. So one thing that I like to do, uh, Rob, is I want to look at the over-under column. So I see you already have over-under selected as one of your uh, columns to manipulate. Um, let's let's sort that from high to low. So there we go. So if you take a look at it, folks, it's really uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four games, eight quarterbacks that are 48 and above. Kind of a big drop after that, after 44 and, and a half. So personally, I'd like to build this lineup with one of those eight quarterbacks. You know what also I like, Rob? Right next to that, over under you have the spread and you're noticing the spread is 
four or less in all of those games. So that tells me it's going to expect it to be a shootout. So, um, oh boy, I'm going to let you tell me what you think of this. I also know that I'll probably want to spend money down the road. So I'm going to want to pick a quarterback that I can pay down a little bit in salary, but I like his weapons. Can you just click on Derek Carr? And over on the right, I can see the teammates that he has. So he has some different weapons. Any comments about uh, Derek Carr? Or the choice? Well, hey, listen. You, you know, when you're when you're uh, in a game with over 50 points and a relatively uh, tight spread, you know, uh, you can't really uh, shake a stick at a guy like Carr, especially with the uh, receiver weapons he has now. And so, you know, you're going to save uh, quite a bit of money with him. So I think you're looking at a pretty decent value there. All right. So let's bring Derek Carr up into our lineup. And not only are you going to see him at the top of the lineup, but you'll see at the very top that the salary that remains is now 44,100 because we just spent 5,900 on that. So if you're doing a GPP lineup, you are going to want to stack. So I am going to look for possible options at wide receiver to uh, that are in that game, both on the Raiders and the run it back with at least one player on the Chargers. So we'll go to uh, flex, but let's uh, let's only look at the Raider game. Do we have we don't do we have the opponent listed, or we can add that? We can. We have that technology. <laughs> so I really like the sort function. You quickly found because there's so many different columns. By just like ty- just typing in uh, op for opponent. Okay, so these are all the different guys that we can potentially uh, stack. The one thing I'd like to 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 do is, can you highlight Darren Waller for me and tell me a little bit about like what might I learn if I didn't know already about the latest news with Darren Waller. Well, if you fly down here to the little news pane, um, so what you have here is three three sections, okay? So you have uh, the wire services up top. So um, these are usually summaries, right? Very concise summaries of what's going on with the player. Um, they're updated, you know, once you get into the thick of things, a little closer to the games, they're updated, uh, you know, every few days, uh, sometimes daily. Uh, you have tweets, Okay, so these are, uh, we picked the, uh, like here you see Adam here, we picked the uh, top commentators, uh, the most followed people that talk about NFL DFS, and we built their tweets into the system. So everything's in one place. And then you have the news, and the news can come from anywhere, like, uh, you know, anything from uh, SI to USA Today to, you know, ESPN, all kinds of different sources of news. So, you know, you click it, uh, it opens up the news story and you read it. And what we see right off the bat is 824. Darren Wallace, week one status is up in the air. Big yellow, questionable, undisclosed, estimated return September 11th. So we don't know if he's going to play, but I, you know, there's a chance he doesn't play. There's a chance that he will not be 100% healthy, maybe be used as a decoy. I think this is a great opportunity to use the other weapons that Darren Carr has. So if I look under teammates, I'm reminded that Devontae Adams and Hunter Renfro are two guys that uh, are some of his favorite targets, one in last year and one new toy this year. And although Adams is expensive, Renfro is not. So let's go ahead and add both of those guys to the... uh... All right, so we're going to lock in Renfro. We're going to lock in Adams. And we need to run that back by with at least one player that is on the, the Chargers. So maybe if you can go back to opponent and get rid of the Raiders for us. And right. so I can just look at my options uh, at the Chargers. And again, I'm because I don't want this video to last an hour, <laughs> there are other metrics which we'd want to take a look at, but in making this decision, but I've already analyzed them and looked at them. (laughs) And I love Mike Williams, especially in GPP, because I think his ceiling is really, really high. 
So if you'd like to help support the show, the one thing that you can do, we are an affiliate of DFS Hub, is you use our link, DFS Hub, question mark, AFF, equal sign 687. I'll put that link also in the description. So when we're selecting a running back, do you want to talk about, I, I love all the columns you use. Do, do you want to talk about any of them? Yeah, you know, these are some of the ones that I typically uh, look at first, right? So spread, obviously, you want a running back that's on uh, a team projected to win um, because obviously you use uh, there's more runs in a game where you're leading. Um, cost per opportunity, you know, we look at this uh, column here when we're trying to find some value, uh, maybe for a, an RB2 on our lineup. Um, projected opportunities, you know, it's all about volume. So, uh, and projected opportunities includes not only rushes, but uh, targets as well, projected targets. Uh, and so I kind of uh, validate that with um, the opportunities, the median opportunities in the last four games for the player, right? You, you, you kind of want to see them uh, be somewhat consistent. Um, obviously, this is going to vary by the opponent and the quality of the opponent. Um, it can also vary sometimes if a player's kind of on the upswing uh, and starting to get more usage either because of an injury or because he's just doing well. Um, so these are some of the, and rushing share, of course, obviously uh, you're going to score uh, more fantasy points, uh, the the bigger share of the pie that the, the running back gets. So Yeah. And you, what I love about your site is everyone can decide what they value the most in coming up with it. And it's so easy to get all of this data. Um, but if they want to cross check it, I see you have a column projected fantasy points. Uh, where did that come from? And yes. So projected fantasy points and, and all of the projections for that matter come from sportsdata.io, our, our data provider. And so uh, they have algorithms that um, they back test and they, uh, you know, do QA against actual performance uh, regularly. So, you know, we found that the projections are extremely accurate uh, or as accurate as you can be. Obviously, you can't see the future and this is an, a numbers game, but uh, yeah, that they come from sportsdata.io. So one thing that I like is you have right next to that column points, which is the projected fantasy points divided by the salary. That's the best thing that we have close to value to the extent that you're trusting the projection. So we're going to sort by that. Go ahead and sort by that. And we'll see that actually one of my favorite plays this week is Najee Harris, especially on DraftKings. He, he gets so involved in the passing game. So let's get Najee Harris in the in the lineup. Yeah, his opportunity is relative to all the other uh, running backs on this little uh, matrix right here are pretty near the top. He never leaves the game, basically. He didn't last year. So he, he gets rushes, he gets uh, receptions. And in the offseason, Pittsburgh did improve. It's still bad, but they still did improve their offensive line. I think they might even have a little bit of an upgrade on quarterback. That's more of a commentary on how Ben played rather than how I think <laughs> whoever wins the quarterback job uh, plays. But let's take a look at the other spot. The other person that kind of bounced out at me uh, is Joe Mixon. And again, I don't have to break the bank. Would I like to have Jonathan Taylor? Of course, but I can't afford Jonathan Taylor. So uh, Joe Mixon with a new offensive line uh, in Cincinnati, uh, three new offensive linemen. I think he's a nice play here. Look at that rushing share. <laughs> he was the only guy, uh, Rob, to get a carry inside uh, the five with a, in getting a touchdown. Um, you see opportunities inside the 10, one of the highest on this slate. Yeah, you know, Mixon... Uh at home uh, versus Pittsburgh and their kind of questionable uh, QB situation. I like this. I like this pick a lot. Yeah. Um, home favored, all, a lot of goodies for, uh, for Mixon. Some people robbed said, I don't like putting running backs in the same, uh, same game. I, I don't have a problem with that. In fact, I like it for GPP. If other people are going to have that philosophy, let's just go contrarian and do that. So let me ask you a question, Rob. 
this is reminding me a lot of what happens when I go Christmas shopping and I have a budget <laughs> to buy for all my nieces and nephews. I realize I don't have much money left and I still have three more gifts I need to buy. So three more and gifts. Coal is cheap. Yeah. So is there a column that you have on your site that can help me if I'm looking for a bargain? Yeah, you know, there's a couple of different ways you can approach this. So one is to kind of figure out what you're paying for opportunities. So I've got a field here, cost per opportunity. All right. So if we, instead of sorting by salary, we sort by this field. So I like that. Because, so this ranks. Yeah, I like this because opportunity is one of the things that most correlate to tight end performance. So we're going to see which is the cheapest given the opportunities they get. And look at this. Uh, two of my favorites for the week right at the top, Zach Ertz and Cole Komet. And honestly, Cole Komet should be higher um, probably because I'm sure you're pulling this from the end of last year. Is that right? Because we're at the beginning of this year. And last year, the Bears had Allen Robinson. And last year, they had Jimmy Graham, who was a touchdown hog. So I really like Zach Ertz, but I also think I need the $700, $700 um, savings. So I think I'll go with Cole Komet. All right. We will lock him in. So I can already tell you, let's go to defense. And... I am needing to, I need you to find me a cheap defense, Rob. <laughs> what Listen, you got for me? Uh, look, look, who, look who just happens to uh, appear on top there. Uh, the Bears, uh, 2200 uh, bucks. So what are you uh, sorting by to make them at the top? So points per salary. Uh, and, you know, we're kind of punting here uh, with the defense, right? Because we're, we're, uh, we're running out of capital. So um so when you uh, say points for salary for our audience what what is i understand what salary is that's a, a draft king salary but what are points yeah so you take uh the uh, projected uh, fantasy points and you divide by salary and it gives you this ratio so you know it's a, a it's a measure of value so yeah. this is the projected value 3.4 you know obviously uh this is all based on projections but um you know, you know, 2,200 bucks, you can, you can take a risk. Yeah. I see the lions. If I wanted to be cheap, save $200, they don't quite have the projection. I look, I like that the bears are at home. They're going against uh, Trey Lance, who is basically a rookie. He's only played three uh, effectively three NFL games. So look, there are seven point dogs. I don't like that, <laughs> but yeah. I like the $2,200 price. So let's get Chicago in our lineup. And that leaves us how much for the flex? Like 4,200? Yeah, let's lock him in. Decent sack rate for the Bears as well, based on their last four games anyway. Yeah, well, unfortunately, Khalil Mack probably had something to do with that. and He's gone. Probably. But but uh, I guess for my flex at $4,200, I think I'm going to need more help. <laughs> <laughs> so when you go to flex again, should we go to that cost per opportunity and see what do we have? All right. So now I'm only looking at people who are less than 4,300 since I only have 4,200. And can we and sort another thing I like to do is uh, I like to just put uh, some type of minimum floor under projected fantasy points. It gets rid <laughs> of the, the junk. Shall we say? <laughs> Did you just call some NFL players junk? Rob? Nothing, nothing personal. Nothing personal. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and sort costs uh, per opportunity. All right. All right. So it lets me see. I've got a couple of very interesting options that are underneath, uh, for, under 4,200. Um, a couple of wide receivers and a bunch of tight ends. No running backs down here. But you know what? Who, who, I guess... I am excited about is Kadarius Tony because if he's healthy, let's click on him. Let's see what, what kind of a news we, what type of news do we have on him? Well, he, he's supposed to come back. He's got a little hamstring issue here. I think he'll be ready to go. Yeah. And, and another mate uh, that he competes with Darius Slayton is uh, questionable. Uh, so he has an injury. So 
not surprisingly, the <laughs> New York Giants, they, they were injured all last year. They're injured again. But this is something I am going to want to watch the news. I'm going to want to watch that bottom right hand of your corner to find out what's going on, not only with Kadarius Tony, but all the New York Giants wide receivers. And if Tony is healthy, I'm excited about this. So let's get Tony into the lineup. Rob, what I notice is when we bring up all our guys in the lineup, we have more different columns there of additional data that we can kind of cross check. We're checking their the target percentage they've had in the last four uh, games, their red zone opportunities in the last four games, the uh, how they've done the, the the defense have done versus the position, right? T- yeah. Tell me a little bit about that last column though, because it looks like a little bit of a graph. Yeah, so this is uh, just a spark chart here that shows uh, the yards that each player has had in their last 10 games. So, you know, a lot of folks uh, look at performance, recent performance, and say, hey, this guy's, you know, uh, just been hitting out of the park last few games. Uh, Let's ride the wave. Um, You know, especially with wide receivers, what happens is, you know, when, when you have a reversion to the mean and you have, you know, coaches that are spreading the wealth out a little bit. And so uh, you don't uh, very often have a case where, you know, a, a, a receiver, for example, is, uh, you know, 100 yards uh, last game, 100 yards a game before. Now they do another 100 yard game. So it's a great visual way to find uh, players that have had success in the past, but have had maybe a little dry spell or, or due for a rebound. And I see that once they meet uh, the bonus, I think on DraftKings, it actually turns red. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. Rob, we've covered a lot in this video. Is there anything else you want people to know about your DFS hub site? Yeah, well, just for uh, sake of education here, um, if you want to kind of figure out what all these columns do, uh, pop open, click the columns button, and you see this little... um, question mark click that it'll take you to the field dictionary and you can like read through what all of these uh columns do and there's there's a few hundred of them so it might take you a little time but uh it's fascinating to kind of see um just the ways you can slice and dice performance data um so that's a little tip there um all of this stuff here most of this stuff here is free um you know we do uh charge a bit for some additional features and data um but starts with free you can do weekly access you can do the entire season uh save 25 percent rob thank you so much for taking uh time to show one of your most valuable tools the nfl lineup builder yeah this has been fun i appreciate you having me and i wish everyone luck and week one it's uh, always an adventure until we see you in the next video take care everybody